We are here today to proclaim and commemorate the love that God has given to Ellie and to Harrison, that they may love each other completely. The Bible teaches that marriage is a picture of the gospel, that as Christ sacrificed his very self for the church, the man shall sacrifice himself to his bride. And as the church commits herself completely to Christ, so the wife shall commit herself completely to the husband. The Bible also teaches that marriage is to be a permanent relationship between one man and one woman freely and totally committed to the Lord and to one another. And Jesus declared that a man shall leave his father and mother and unite with his wife as one flesh. In light of these words of Christ, who gives this bride to be married? Mother and I. Ellie and Harrison, this is a great day, and we don't want you to forget even a moment. So I want you to take a few moments and to soak it in. Remember all the hard work that it took to get to this point, and take a look at all of the people who have come here to celebrate with you uh, and to celebrate and commemorate this moment with you. <laughs> Everyone here is here because they love you, believe in you, and are here to support you and your marriage and to keep you accountable to the commitment you've made to one another and to Christ. And so let's pause for a moment and let's praise God for bringing us all together here. Let me pray for us. Father, we thank you for this moment in time that we get to gather to celebrate, to celebrate you, your love for all people, your love for um, Ellie and Harrison and their love for one another. God, it's not an accident that they're here, but it is through your sovereignty and your wisdom and your faithfulness to each of us, to them specifically, that you have brought them here to this moment. And we thank you for uh, this time that we get to praise you, to, to celebrate love, to, to laugh, to enjoy one another's company over the rest of this night as we celebrate their marriage together. We love you. We praise you in Jesus name. Amen. It is with great joy and honor that I stand here today to officiate the wedding between you two. I've had the pleasure of knowing you, Ellie, for, uh, and your family for almost a decade now. So you were in middle school uh, when we first met, and just as you do now, even then, you had a maturity and a steadfast way about the way that you loved Jesus and the way you loved, for those, uh, and the way you loved those that you care about most. And Harrison, you confirmed this in her when you said that one of the things you love most about Ellie is the consistent way that she loves those she cares about, particularly the way that she loves Jesus. And that is, uh, it was on a winter retreat with a crew, a campus ministry, that you saw the way she worshiped the Lord standing next to you. And that was the moment when God revealed to you that she was the one that you wanted to marry. And Harrison, I've had the privilege of getting to know you over the past few years. The more I've gotten to know you, it has been a pleasure to watch the way that you have been so intentional to care about everyone in the room. I've watched you go from a conversation with someone twice your age to playing with my six-year-old son. And all the same, all with the same intentionality and care for every single person. And Ellie, you affirmed that in him by telling me that one of the things you love most about Harrison is the way that he loves and deeply cares for everyone he meets. You said that he is an amazing friend and makes everyone feel cared for, whether he's known them for years or for minutes. It is this attentiveness and loyalty and care for each other that will keep your love alive and reflect the character of Christ in your relationship to one another. It is also these characteristics of Christ that make you more alike Jesus together than separate. In 1 Corinthians 13, it outlines this type of Christ-like love. Verses 4 through 8 say, Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And then down to verse 13, it says, So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Love truly is the greatest and Christ-like Christ -like love never ends. Here on this earth, we only see a snapshot of this never-ending love, this never-ending patience, this never-ending 
kindness. We only get moments of this love from one another. It is only God who can show you true love, patience, and kindness. So we must always look to Him and His Word as we seek to discover who we are to be as husband and as wife, and how we are to show the other that kind of heavenly love. Ellie and Harrison, it is important to remember that you did not come to this day on your own. God in His sovereignty and kindness has brought you to this point and given you the gift of love. He must be the one that you lean on and trust in to sustain your love for one another when the enemy prowls like a lion seeking to destroy what God has bound together. Ellie and Harrison, I charge you to continue to look to Scripture, to live your life, and to love each other. Look to Genesis 1. Remember that you both are made in the image of God. Always remember who your real enemy is. Look to Colossians 3, Ellie, as you lovingly submit to God and learn to lovingly submit to Harrison's biblical leadership. Look to Ephesians 5, Harrison, and love Ellie, sacrificing your whole self as Christ has sacrificed his self for the church. And it is out of this example of sacrificial love by Jesus found in Ephesians 5 that we all seek to live. More importantly, it is out of his life and death and resurrection that we find salvation, and it is only in Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that you will find what your soul is searching for. At this time, we will worship the Lord together for sending Jesus as we sing in Christ alone. And so we invite you to stand and sing with us this uh, hymn of praise to the Lord. be seated. Turn and face one another. Today you have heard God's word and the declaration of his design for you in marriage. If you are ready to commit to build a marriage as God instituted and to love each other as he desires, please say we are. We are. In light of this commitment, each of you will now say your vows to one another and to the Lord. Harrison, repeat after me. In the name of God, 
In the name of God. I, Harrison, take you, Ellie. I, Harrison, take you, Ellie. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for richer or poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness or in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Ellie, repeat after me. In the name of God. In the name of God. I, Ellie, take you, Harrison. I, Ellie, take you, Harrison. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Harrison and Ellie at this time have chosen to exchange rings as a symbol of their love for each other. As you wear these rings, let them be a daily reminder of God's plan for marriage. As the ring is unending, so is God's love. And marriage is designed by God to be unending. As this ring is made of refined metals, let your marriage be also surrendered to God's purifying process. Harrison, take this ring, place it on Ellie's ring finger, and repeat after me. Ellie, with this ring, Ellie, with this ring, I commit my life and my love to you. I commit my life and my love to you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Ellie, as you place this on Harrison's ring finger, repeat after me. Harrison, with this ring, Harrison, with this ring, I commit my life and my love to you. I commit my life and my love to you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us now in joy and celebration recite together the Lord's Prayer that He taught His disciples to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The families of the bride and groom will now take a moment to collectively pray over uh, the marriage and the couple. Would you join them in prayer from your seat uh, over the next few moments?
Elian Harrison, you have now committed to God and to each other your lives in love, and surely God is good. And surely you have lived lives and will continue to live lives that praise Him. So by the authority of God and in accordance with the laws of this state, Harrison, I can't hold you back anymore. You may now <laughs> kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Harrison William Floyd. Yeah. 